Hello, I'm Abraham Weisfeld, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, actually, uh, with uh, my thesis having been done at the University of Quebec Montreal, here in Montreal, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And I'm interviewing Eric Grotsky, who is a very interesting uh, personality and political figure as well. Now, we're just getting setting up, setting up here. That's pretty good. Now, I have a, a number of questions that I have composed, you know, for Eric to uh, tell us all about. And uh, we can go to them on screen here as well. I, mean, I can share a screen. We're doing this on behalf of the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund, which is found at the website by the same name, uh, Jewish-Socialist-Bund.net. Uh, and the various chapters of the Jewish Bund internationally are listed there, together with the original uh, uh, Jewish PLO Declaration of 1989, no, 1988, uh, subsequently published in the book uh, 1989 by Clarity Books. So here we are, and, and now we're working together. And uh, Eric uh, is uh, an American. I'm uh, living here in Canada. And there's uh, other chapters in uh, southern United States, in Arizona, in Mexico, Toronto, Canada, and Paris, France. And uh, there are uh, a number of other Jewish Bund chapters in the world, you know, who are not politically active as we are. So we are more so the uh, avant-garde of the Jewish Bundist movement, founded originally in 1897. Now, Eric, uh, let's go to the uh, questions here. And I have to share a screen right here so that everybody else can see the questions as well. Here we go. Now, Eric, First question is, your origins are different than myself, me being a second generation Jewish refugee from Poland. How did your family's origins form up your identity and your uh, Jewish identity in particular? Well, I um, grew up and with a upbringing of Jewish and Christian. My dad was always a, my family is always support uh, Israel and it's unfortunate and uh, I, guess I wasn't really connected with that. I didn't really care for Israel because of their um, occupation of Palestine. It was unfortunate that I had a group in that family like that. Mm -hmm. But um, each of your parents are of uh, different backgrounds as well, I understand. Yes. Hmm. My mom is Christian and my dad's Jewish. Yes. Um, uh, are they... Uh, long-time Americans, or are they uh, like second-generation Americans? Uh, my parents both born in the United States. Um, I don't know what generation exactly. Uh, um, but um, your father, he uh, is from a, a, a Jewish family, both parents uh, of which were Jewish, I suppose? Yes, correct. Uh -huh. The American Jewish community is quite... Uh, distinguished in that, uh, according to statistics, you know, 50% of the young Jewish uh, Americans nowadays, you know, uh, have partners who are not Jewish. And there's a whole new generation of children as a result, who are uh, sort of, you know, new Jewish, <laughs> new Jewish, you know, people, <laughs> uh, sort of, you know, um, with a, a dual identity. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting phenomenon. And I certainly welcome it, you know, because we have uh, lost so many Jewish people, you know, that it's an, you know, uh, interesting way of augmenting the number of uh, Jewish people who can uh, continue to uh, uh, carry and propagate the uh, Jewish culture, and the Jewish political culture in particular, like the Jewish Bund here. So, um, your father uh, and mother are both conservative, but you became uh, quite independently minded. You know, how did that come about? Um, that started when I was becoming Muslim. I was commu a uh, community day, and then I, I realized that Palestine was the true inheritors of the land, and that they deserve peace and under and the uh, safety, and you know, yeah, self determination for their people. Yes, uh, yes, Palestine is certainly uh, a historic event that's uh, bringing about uh, transformation and consciousness 
in particular for Jewish people, young Jewish people. According to the uh, latest uh, uh, polls, uh, young Jewish Americans uh, consider Israel to be an apartheid state, like a racist state practicing racism, you know, to the degree of 25%, which is very significant and increasing rapidly. It didn't used to be like that at all. It used to be like 5%. <laughs> now it's 25%. So um, let's see now what the uh, next question is going to be here. Yes. Question number two, is your primary religious education from your mother being Christian? Uh, yes, growing up, I grew up in the more Christian side, sort of like Christmas. I still do celebrate Christmas to this day with my family because, you know, I keep connections with them. Yeah, it's family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see now, let me get that question up there again, yeah. Okay. Um, question number three. Is your adoption of Israel, Islam in 2010, I understand, from readings or local influences? Uh, yes, I had friends that are Muslim and I did a little research on it. I found it, it molded with my, my morals, to be exact. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, there, uh, there is a problem in Judaism, you know, because it has two tendencies. And uh, one tendency is, you know, setting up a, a nation like other nations, you know, as was uh, the, the populist demand, you know, in the ancient days. And the prophet Samuel, you know, came back and said, you know, like, what are you talking about? You know, you want to have a king to direct your life, you know, and, and turn you into soldiers and, and uh, steal your money with taxes and all this sort of thing, you know? And people said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so he told me, oh, this is not what, you know, like your religion is prescribing. That's a very important uh, a citation to refer to. It's in um, the first book of Samuel, uh, section eight, paragraphs uh, six to 20, as I remember it. Okay, so your uh, attraction to uh, Islam is certainly understandable. Uh, question number four, did you find Islam, do you find that Islam is compatible with Judaism? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, we fast on the day that the Jews fast, that one day, Yom Kippur, is it? Yes, that's right. We fast with the Prophet Muhammad taught us that we should be a, we're a shared people, you know, in, in the sense that of solidarity. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yes. That's beautiful. The, yeah, the because... Jews, and, Jews in Arabia were um, very connected to the Prophet because he called them and wanted, he wanted to create a nation. And that nation was based on, you know, Islamic laws and stuff like that. But it included Jews and Christians as part of the as part of the system, as the, the nation too. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. In, in foundation, yes. Uh -huh. hmm. um, yes, I, I understand that, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, I myself, I fast Ramadan every year now since about five years I've been fasting Ramadan. So it's uh, sort of a mutual affair, you know, I, especially when I was living amongst the Palestinians. And uh, I wanted to fast, you know, because, you know, like, how can I, continue to eat you know when everybody else is fasting not everybody else actually you know like but uh, nonetheless I, I did you know because it made me feel uh, connected so uh let's see what's next question here um number five uh did the oppression of the palestinian people alienate you from the pseudo religious affirmations of the zionist ideology Yes, very much. I see the Jewish suffering as same with the Palestinians. Um, Israel is an apartheid state. They 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 do what the Nazis have done. They're 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 continuing what Nazis have done. And they don't care. They don't care. But uh, yeah, some of the some of what they've done is what the Nazis have done. You know, to the Jewish people as well. Yeah. 
But uh, I don't think that they can get away with becoming uh, like a Nazi state, you know, because the opposition, in particular, the Jewish opposition is too strong. Whereas in the German case, the uh, German opposition was rather weak and divided and uh, conflicted and everything like that. So I think we're in a much better position now. You know, both the, the Jewish opposition together with the Palestinian opposition will prevent any such uh, further degeneration. I think that Israel is in uh, retreating in its political position now, especially now, you know, since Amnesty International came out and declared that Israel is an apartheid state, quite clearly, on all criteria. Yeah. Okay, let's see, there's another question. And it is... Yes, <clears throat> do you have a message that you would say now to the Muslim peoples of the Ummah, and even the Palestinians in particular? Yes, Palestine in particular and Muslims, uh, we are in, we should be in solidarity with the Jewish, Jewish people because anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are two sides of the same coin and that we need to stand against the Zionists and their remarks towards us and mean strong, faithful people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that uh, you represent uh, what is the potential for a, a Jewish Muslim alliance against Zionism? I think that that way we would be very powerful because right now we tend to be divided, you know, because the Muslims think they haven't been informed otherwise that uh, all Jewish people, you know, are supporting, you know, this, the Zionist state of Israel, whereas that's not the case. And it's not even known, you know, that a majority of the Jewish people don't even live in that state, don't have citizenship of that state, do not have a vote in the governments of that state. There are like a faction of the Jewish people who have gone off on this tangent because the alternative, which is the Jewish Socialist Bund, us, was wiped out by the Nazis during the Holocaust. So the Zionists came in and took, took over, swept up you know, the place of uh, political culture and, and internationally. And of course, financed by the Jewish national bourgeoisie, well, you know, like, Without any opposition, they got away with it, you know, for so long. But now, you know, I don't think they can get away with it any further. And here we are to prove that that's the case, that we can, you know, build an alternative, you know, to Zionism. Because as I mentioned to you before, Eric, you know, when the uh, Jewish opposition groups, you know, are castigating Zionism, you know, for its violation of human rights, for its violations of morality, for its violations of Judaism, and the Turkarta, you know, back set up. Well, does it work? No, because the Zionists, they know this <laughs> and they don't care. You know, why? Because, you know, they think that they're very, you know, conservative and that they don't think the world is gonna be changing. And so they adopt, you know, the old formula of, you know, national independence, you know, in the form of a sovereign state. Sovereignty is very dangerous, of course, and it's led to all the wars of, that have passed in Europe and eventually, you know, the Holocaust, you know. Nonetheless, the Zionists have adopted, you know, nation state strategy as a way to achieve, uh, you know, national security. Has it worked? No, <laughs> you know, not even in the short term. And uh, it's also, you know, jeopardized you know, the reputation of the Jewish people internationally and given, you know, the anti-Semites, you know, food to feed. So we, the Jewish uh, Bund and particularly, you know, the activists, you know, the Jewish Socialist Bund, uh, and now here declaring that we're up here uh, uh, speaking out against uh, the Zionist movement, the Zionist ideology, and the Jewish national bourgeoisie, which is supporting it mostly. And we're calling it down on its uh, issues, on its uh, uh, strategic errors, and on its uh, failure to resolve you know, the security and existence uh, of the Jewish people. And uh, we will succeed in doing so because Zionists have no answer to us because we call for Jewish national cultural autonomy in our own homelands, and that's in plural, because we don't live just, you know, like in one country. We live in practically all the countries of the world. And why shouldn't we, you know? And why shouldn't we be, you know, what we, we have been born to be? You know, we have very oftentimes, you know, a dual identity. So we're like Jewish Americans or Jewish Canadians or, or Jewish French, you know? Whatever, you know, why should we have to give up, you know, half of our identity just because we're afraid of anti-Semitism? No, we stop anti-Semitism where it sprouts. 
and that we do in the name of the Jewish people, not just in the name of being a leftist or, or, or you know, uh, being in solidarity with uh, other racialized, you know, uh, communities. We ourselves are a racialized community. We are not an oppressor nation. It is the Zionist movement which is the oppressor and not the Jewish people. And they only use the Jewish name to cover up, uh, you know, the, uh, the violations of human rights uh, and, and uh, the uh, nation state strategy that they've adopted, you know, that they learned from Europe. So what they've learned, the Ashkenazim, they learned from Europe that to be strong, you have to be a nation state. And so they're trying to do the same thing. Well, thanks, but no thanks. You know, we have to find our own way to stop fascism internationally. What are the Zionists going to do? Let fascism sprout and give them support as allies so that fascism takes over the whole world? And what are they going to do then? They're going to leave you know, Israel alone you know, to be a Jewish nation state? <laughs> no way. They built up a whole you know, like propagandistic efforts uh, based upon you know, a Jewish conspiracy and all that. And they're going to have to you know, like come and attack because that's what the Christians believe. They believe you know, that the Jews are going to be wiped out, except for those who convert to Christianity, of course. <laughs> And those are the allies of Israel? Well, really, you know, like, okay, this is uh, something else that one should see. This is 2001. This comes from a conference that we held in Chicago. And it says, uh, Jewish unity for just peace and end the occupation. And this was an international conference. Well, not so international, you know, with South Americans. And that really sort of kickstarted the uh, movement um, in North America. And before that, uh, there was my uh, anthology, which came out in 1989, published by Clarity Books, which had an anthology of various uh, Jewish positions, including Chomsky, that were criticizing or opposed to Zionism. And before that, Chomsky wasn't even known as either Jewish, you know, or anti-Zionist. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this uh, is part of the problem, you know, that there are so many Jewish people who are so concerned with their own self-interest that they're just trying to pass and they're covering up their Jewish identity. When in fact, you know, that we call upon them now to speak up and oppose the Zionism that speaks in our name. I think that's summing up, you know, what our objective is. And I'm, um, I, I wish to welcome you and to congratulate you on your uh, personal voyage, you know, intellectual voyage in which you've done, you know, like all by yourself. That's sort of incredible, you know, and uh, I look forward to working with you in the future for sure. Thank you very much, uh, Eric Grotsky. Welcome.